bacteria, viruses, infections, parasites, and predators. Sometimes it feels like the world is out to get your flock. One disease that can make a seasoned professional or a new bird owner feel this way is coccidiosis. Coxie for short. Hi, I'm Alyssa with Southland Organics, where we find natural solutions to natural problems. You can learn about these solutions on southlandorganics.com. We all know that raising any type of livestock comes with its own risks and rewards. The rewards are pretty self-explanatory. Companionship and usable end products like eggs. The risks get a little more complex, but the one at the forefront of everyone's mind is disease. Coccidiosis is an extremely common disease in poultry caused by a protozoal organism of the Amiridae family. The most characteristic signs of infection are diarrhea, weight loss, and reduced production. But it can also be fatal. But where does it come from? And what can we do about it? Coccidia are universally present in areas where poultry are being raised. But fortunately, there are some really specific conditions that have to happen for a bird to actually develop a disease. First, the bird has to be susceptible to disease. This means that they're already being impacted by another illness or are immunosuppressed in some way or another. This could be old age, genetic anomalies, or poor nutrition. And this doesn't mean that healthy birds will not get coxie. It just means that they're less susceptible when challenged. The next two requirements go hand in hand. The bird has to ingest a relatively high number of oocysts, and the oocysts have to be sporulated. Oocysts are microscopic protozoa eggs. Fresh oocysts shed in the feces are inactive and will remain inactive for a day or two until they get enough moisture, oxygen, and heat to sporulate. Sporulation is the process that allows the oocysts to become active, mature, and infective. After sporulation, oocysts can then survive in the soil, litter, feed, and dust for long periods of time, depending on environmental conditions, which offer plenty of time for animals, pests, and people to move them around. So remember, coxie are always present with poultry, but they only become a problem when certain criteria are met. Infection happens when a susceptible bird ingests a large number of sporulated oocysts. There are a lot of different species of Imeria, and they all like to hang out in different areas of the digestive tract in different hosts. This is part of what makes them so tricky to beat. For chickens, it's most common to see Imeria tenella in the cica or Imeria necotrix in the small intestine. If a bird has a coccyx infection of any type, you can expect symptoms like diarrhea with mucus, weight loss, decreased growth and production, as well as decreased feed and water consumption. Secondary infections with colostridial bacteria are also common and can lead to additional clinical signs like fever, dehydration, discolored feces, and rapid mortality. Luckily, there are options for preventing coccy outbreaks in your flocks. First and foremost, ensure that your birds are healthy enough to manage an outbreak if it does occur. Remember, the most susceptible birds are the ones that are already weakened by something else. You can do this by providing things like nutritional supplements, vitamins, and probiotics. It is also important to be mindful of coop cleanliness. Do not underestimate the power of litter management. Infected and recovered chickens can shed inactive oocysts into their environment. And once these oocysts are exposed to moisture, air, and heat, they can sporulate and will spread. But properly managed coop floors will not provide the moisture needed for these to progress to infective strains. Keep feces to a minimum. This can be done by removing waste as often as necessary and by refraining from overcrowding your coop. There are also options to vaccinate your birds against specific coccidial strains, which many hatcheries offer when ordering new chicks. A favorite of most backyard bird enthusiasts is the use of anti-coccidial feeds. These feeds are used to reduce the number of protozoa present in the bird's digestive tract by killing them or preventing growth and proliferation. It's important to remember that if you use these feeds, they must be rotated with regular feed. This is because using anti feeds all the time could prevent your birds from establishing healthy immunity and could help create organisms resistant to those feeds. Exposure to some infectious organism is completely necessary for building a healthy immunity against coxie strains. If birds are fed a constant diet of anti containing feeds, this won't happen and their birds will be left defenseless in the absence of that feed. Because of this, it's important to consider rotating active ingredients if anti are used continuously 
or to allow your healthy birds to take breaks from constant exposure to those feeds. If your coop does experience an outbreak, they are hard to stop. These are powerful little organisms that can have devastating effects on your coop. Using anticoccidial drugs is just about the only way to flush them out once they're there. Vitamins A and K, as well as antibiotics, are helpful in improving the rate of recovery and preventing secondary infections. It's also important to ensure that there is plenty of fresh and clean water available to avoid dehydration. That was a lot, so let's recap. Coccidiosis or coxy is a common disease where poultry live. The protozoa that cause the disease are always present, but they don't become a problem until birds have a weakened immune system and they have an environment in which they can thrive. If a bird does have coxy, they may have symptoms like diarrhea, weight loss, and decreased growth and production. While there are options for treating coxy, the best thing to do is prevent it through keeping your birds healthy and your coop clean. There's also the possibility of vaccination and anti-coxy feeds. If your birds do get coxy, help them get through it with vitamins and plenty of clean drinking water. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, feel free to email me at alyssa at southlandorganics.com, call 800-608-3755, or comment on this video. Keep up with us on social media at Southland Organics.